Hello, this is Gail Ferris, your narrator. I chose to go to Upernavik just because I knew it had extraordinary flowers and that the mountains came down to the sea and that those mountains were mostly granite and metamorphosed terrain. Today I'm finally ready to disembark from Upernavik. And this is the boat. This map is of my first day paddling when I left Upernavik and paddled into Torsut Passage. Here is an interesting deposit of columnar basalt. This is what it looked like from my camera's view exactly coming into Torsut Passage. And here is another photograph taken some years later. Same view. Behind me is a nice consistent source of water runoff and an aquifer. While paddling down inside this passage I was guided by these lovely ladies over to the safe side where they were enjoying having a lovely feast on ulk which they were filleting and then boiling in salt water in traditional Greenlandic way to eat ulk which is very delicious. While I was there, these flowers were fully opened in early July. They were Pedicularis, and then this is, of all things, Rhododendron. What absolutely amazed me about this Rhododendron is that the flowers were the same size as the flowers on regular Rhododendron bushes in temperate zones. And this Rhododendron looks slightly like the well-known PMJ Rhododendron. Next, I absolutely couldn't believe that I came upon birch growing espalier in this area. It was the farthest north I had found birch. Parcel even wrote that birch grew in Upernavik, the farthest north of anywhere in Greenland. So that truly fascinated me. And for years, I would always keep an eye out for birch. This was very exciting to find this on this sheltered, warm, south-facing bank. Around the corner in a very dry, stony area, I found this saxifragia, which is true to its name. And uh, this is just inside the fjord I'm heading down. I paddle eastward out of Torsu to an island now Januak which acts like a bottle stopper in this passage, literally. And the views on the bottom were wonderful that I show you next. This area has a very beautiful bottom and right in the center is a sea urchin. Too far down for me to gather. Because the uh, rocks are loaded with a white feldspar, it's very easy to see what is down there. There's small fish down there and uh, tyropods. We're at 72 degrees, 51 minutes, 30 seconds north, and 55 degrees, 40 minutes west. There are some more of those lovely sea urchins. They're down about 5 feet. And last year's snow is still melting, and that indicates the high tide mark. Tide is coming in. Tide in this area ranges uh, two meters. In the sandy areas, there are clams and mussels, which are very good eating. And yet, right along the edge of the water, they're very, very wide. Now we're coming. Up this is something I'd heard about from Frederica de Laguna, about the 
very heavy deposits of iron in this area. The iron is so dense it can affect what your compass will tell you and it will even show rust. Out of the passage, this uh, looks like a pretty solid iron. Do wonders for a compass. Today, July 22nd, I am in a very beautiful fjord which has a lake feeding this river that we're scanning uh, into this uh, very pleasant area. Uh, we are just east of Apilitok and the interesting thing is the um, granite domes in this area. And uh, in view right now is a particularly fascinating, precariously perched rock that just sort of landed and wedged just perfectly. From I figured out as I was teetering from rock to rock that each of these rocks was dropped by the glacier as it receded. And so they just landed any old way. From uh, this uh, escarpment above me, which is a granite dome. This valley is a series of domes leading to the west. When you look at this, it's particularly fascinating to see how perfectly smooth this surface of granite is. It just shows uh, some minor exfoliation from freeze thawing, but uh, it's extremely solid rock. And uh, this is the plethora of bergy bits we have, which uh, I passed through yesterday in my kayak on the way here. What an incredible sight, this rounded surface of exfoliating marine sediments that are metamorphosed, feldspar and silica. A lot of pink coloration to it because of the iron. It's just a beautiful dome. On the opposite side is all jagged brown rock. This area would be quite a bit of fun, a good challenge for somebody who really enjoys rock climbing. This morning I have been gathering plant specimens of lichens, some mosses, and the local flora. I had landed on the west side of this fjord because I thought it was warmer. But a uh, most interesting curiosity is the fact that uh, there's no birch here. And yet, just a couple miles away on a Pilituk, there is birch. In the center is, is uh, Arctic poppy. Actually, it's Papaver Icelandica. It's a circumpolar flower. In the foreground, you can see a myriad of lichens and all kinds of acidic terrestrial plants. These are about the smallest little flowers you can imagine here. The flower is bigger than the plant itself. Lovely color. Here's the first flower I've seen of the epilobium family, which is a circumpolar. That's very common fireweed in Alaska. I've paddled up to the ancient village of Kuchapik on the backside of Apilatok, where people at one time lived on Apilatok Island on its east side. And then later on in the 40s, they moved to the west side. This is on the east side of uh, Pilituk Island. We have a lovely falls coming down here. Uh, but what is of great interest to me, and it's very beautiful, what I would call a Uulidic kind of granite. And I've taken some samples with me home. The colors you can see are quite spectacular. And then sitting in the clear water, it's 
kind of highlights that color. The myriad of pinks, reds, oranges, blacks, and green. You see lots of red stone. It's really red fels. You see it's quite brilliant the color. It's almost as red as my boat is. <laughs> very amusing. The look of the stone is a very bizarre speckled effect. And, uh, rather fun to look at. This is where I next went, and while I was camping at Ilarwood, I discovered the water in the mud puddles that looked so perfectly clear was salt water. It made wonderful oatmeal, but horrible coffee. These are my uh, conditions this morning. It's a very calm day. The water gets deeper here. You can get a feeling for what the currents are doing here. Here you can see the common seaweeds in this area, which is the kelp and fucus. The unusual density of seaweeds in this area is due to the high colloidal suspension of rock flour rich in hematite or iron in these waters. And in this area, there are red sea anemones. And crabs are here as well. In this area, uh, you can just see poking out of the water mussels. And uh, I ate some the other evening. They are very, very good eating. Qu quite a pleasant surprise in eating. Down in here are some more big sea anemones busy capturing food. I paddled back over to Atilig Suak Island where I had camped first, but it was on the east side, which had a very interesting waterfall and some totally new flowers. Very exciting to see. There's lots of iron in these rocks. There's plenty of calcareous white felspar clay and rock flower here too. This is one of the tiniest plants I've ever seen. It's a Cassiope hypnoides. It has feathery leaves. The leaves are so tiny. This is Saxifragia tricuspidata in among Cassiope tetragona, which is much larger than the previous Cassiope hypnoides. This is mountain avens, and there are many types in the Arctic. One thing that's fascinating are the finished blossoms are very exciting to look at. These are so tiny they look like this is moss. Next to it is the smallest willow. Moss willow is extremely small as well. The flowers on the colmia are about the same size as what you would see on a uh, small willow. They are in the same family as the willow. Here's another extensive little copse of solid colmia. Here's the plant. 
unbelievably small. There is a buttercup. Oh, so many in this area. This is a female ptarmigan. That has just stepped either a female or a male. I think it's female. I'm not sure. And it's uh, looking at me. Oh, I'm looking at it. They make a very funny sound. A crackling kind of sound. <laughs>